Okay, kids, time for uh, part two of this lesson here. Um, so we're continuing along with section uh, 6.4 where we're looking at the graphs of uh, trig functions and we're just going to have a little look at how you can determine the equation from the graph. So just a quick little reminder, uh, we just finished off by graphing some trig functions and now we're basically just doing it all in reverse. So just a little uh, bit of information here for you. Um, when we're determining the equation uh, from a graph, you can generally use sine or cosine to describe the sinusoidal function. If you see a graph that does this, it's actually impossible to tell whether it's sine or cosine. Now, you might make an argument that if uh, if the uh, orientation of the x and y axis is this, it looks like it's sine because it's starting right here and it's kind of going up. But you could also say that it's a phase shifted cosine graph. So we don't ever really know. Now, usually you're gonna pick whichever one uh, is, is the most sensible one. Sometimes it'd be total sine or cosine, but both will work. Uh, we're not gonna deal with tangent graphs too often, again, because most of the time when we're dealing with an application, uh, which is anything that sort of has a circular repetitive motion, it's gonna to wanna to make sinusoidal. Turns out tangent doesn't actually describe things too realistically. Waves and everything are sine and cosine. Okay, so just a few little uh, tips here to find A, B, C, and D when you're uh, trying to determine the equation of a sine graph. And keep in mind, this is for sine graph. Uh, cosine graph will be very, very similar, but they will have a few small uh, tweaks. But for a sine graph, uh, what we're gonna have is you can find A by using this handy little formula right here. And this looks maybe like it's complicated, but it's really, really simple. You take the maximum value on the graph, you subtract the minimum value, you take the absolute value because it's always positive, and then you divide it by two. So this is just as uh, as simple as if you have a graph and your graph is up like this and you want to know the amplitude, well, you take the high point, you take the low point, you figure out that distance and you divide it by two, and that's the amplitude, and you just always make it positive. Um, to find B, uh, we talked about this one before, figure out the period using two peaks, Generally, now it doesn't always have to be two peaks. It must be two um, identical points. I recommend two peaks on the graph, uh, but any two identical points will work. So when I say identical, I mean they could be two troughs. Uh, the one thing to be very careful about is if you have a sine graph, it goes like this. Uh, you can't say that this point here and this point are identical because at this point the graph is going up and at this point the graph is going down. So that actually would not work. An identical point on the uh, center line, you'd have to pick two points that are both going up here and here. Anyway, so I'm, for that reason, I would advise you to avoid the center line points. So two pieces usually good. Um, C can be a little trickier. This is probably the hardest one here uh, to locate the starting point of the graph. We have to remember that if we're dealing with a sine uh, graph, sine starts at the origin and goes up and then comes back down and it's at its central line location. Uh, cosine starts high and then starts dropping low. So this is what sine looks like and this is what cosine looks like. So just be aware that sine uh, starts at the central line and goes up and cosine starts at its highest point and goes down. If you see something else, then uh, it's gonna be a little different. Um, there are infinite starting points uh, because these graphs, you know, they continue on and on and on. So what we tend to do, this isn't, isn't a rule, but it's a guideline. We tend to try and choose the smallest possible non-negative value for C. So I'll explain that one maybe as we get into the examples a little bit better, but basically if you've got a graph and it goes like this and it goes like this, well, which starting point for sine are you gonna pick? This one, this one, this one. If the x-axis uh, and the y-axis were right here, <laughs> that's a terrible job. Um, but if your axes were right here, what you would tend to do is you'd pick the smallest possible non-negative value. So. Uh, usually it might be like this point right here because C would be something positive because uh, this would be like uh, uh, sine of X minus uh, C. Uh, if you go, well, actually, sorry, no, my, my apologies. If you go X minus C, you're probably picking, uh, picking this one here. 
So anyway, it doesn't super duper matter just as long as uh, as you're getting it. And again, there's some debate about which value you're going to pick, but I would tend to go with that one. Okay, and finding D, uh, similar thing here. This almost looks like the same formula as A. It's a little different. You'll notice with A, we subtracted. Here we added uh, because what uh, A is, is we're trying to find the difference in height, but for D, we're actually finding like the average value. So this is an average value. Uh, therefore, we're taking the sum and dividing uh, by two. So if you've got a graph that's up like this, um, you take the high point, you take the low point, you add them up and you divide by two, that gives you the average, which is the center line there. Quite often, you can just look and see what D is on the graph too. Okay, so let's do a little example here. So example four, write the equation of a sinusoidal function that has an amplitude of three, period of blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is just a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, warm up sort of question here. This is sort of like the thought process. Uh, quite often we'll see a graph with these features, which is what example five will have, but example four, we're just seeing this basic stuff. So if we have to do this, the first thing I would do, of course, is I would start by saying, okay, well, the general equation, now it's a sinusoidal function here, um, we will probably default to using sine instead of cosine. And this is the general equation. So we're always going to start by writing that down and we're just going to fill in the gaps wherever we can. So here's the general equation. So A, we can see uh, it's pretty easy here, amplitude to 3, so that tells us A is equal to 3. So A is 3 down, let's see if I can, there we go. Um, B, the formula is, okay, so normally we had a formula, and I'm going to write off to the side here, we said period is 2 pi over B, but of course this can get flipped around to B is 2 pi over period. So we can always write 2 pi over period, which is 2 pi over 2 pi over 3. And that, of course, is 2 pi divided by 2 pi over 3. And I'm showing this the very long way, but just in case you're not very comfortable with this kind of stuff, b is equal to 3. So we had to do a little bit of work to get that guy. Uh, C is, uh, so it's a phase shift of pi over 2 to the right. So when we look at this, it's x minus c is the general form, so if we're going to the right, then x minus pi over 2 is good, so c will be positive pi over 2. And then, of course, the vertical displacement two units down, that one's pretty easy, that's equal to negative 2, right? Okay, so just uh, keep in mind that this guy here was the period, this guy over here was c, and then, of course, this guy over here is going to be this uh, d. Okay, so putting this all together, take all this and you stick it up into this equation and we wind up getting y equals 3 sine 3x minus pi over 2 minus 2. And that would be our equation. So, so final answer deal. There we go. Ta-da. Okay, so example five, now we're getting the equation by looking at a graph. So this is a little harder because no one's telling us the amplitude and all that business, we just got to figure it out. So let's, uh, let's look at this equation, uh, sort of this graph right here. So we can look at some things here and you don't necessarily need to use formulas all the time. You can just go ahead and look. I mean, I can see that the center line is cutting through the middle here. Uh, if I wanted, I could use my formulas, and maybe just for practice, I will use them, but I would encourage you to probably just use some common sense as well. So if I want A, I'm going to take the maximum value, and I'm going to subtract the minimum value, and then I'm going to divide that by 2. So the maximum value, and let's maybe just use a different color to differentiate here. So that when we talk about the maximum value, it's the maximum value for y. So y uh, equals, uh, we can see it's 0. And right down here, that's the minimum value. That's the lowest value we can have. So the minimum, y is equal to negative 2. So how this formula would wind up working, uh, we would expect to go 0 minus 
negative 2, and then divide that by 2. The way absolute values work is everything inside, uh, you work it out first. So you would go like this, 0 minus negative 2 is just 2. And of course, that gives you a value of just 1. Now you might have been able to just look at this and say, okay, so the amplitude is equal to just 1. I can see it on the graph, but there's how you can work it out with the formula. All right, so usually you can't obtain B right away. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to figure out what the period is. We can see that the period, period from here to here. Now, how are we going to work that out? So common sense would tell us you're going to go, uh, period can be calculated by 5 pi over 4 minus pi over 4. So we can see that the period is 4 pi over 4, which is just pi. So the way we're going to calculate B is by going B equals 2 pi over period, which is 2 pi over pi. So B would be 2. Okay, C is a little bit of an interesting one here. So we can see what we have is we have a sine graph. And well, okay, now the question is saying let's do this in sine and let's do this in cosine. So A and B are not going to change and neither is D. But for C, we have two options. So C, if we're doing sine, or C, if we're doing cosine, we're going to get two different results. So we can see that the sine graph starts at, and we can see it actually looks like it starts at the point 0 comma negative 1. So if we look at this graph, we can say that right here, that is the natural starting point for, for sine, okay? Because it starts at the central line and it's working its way up. Now we could have also said that it starts here, but that would be kind of silly, right? So we're not, not going to entertain that craziness. Now, where does cosine naturally start? So cosine starts at its high point and then it starts dropping. So right here, that looks like where we would find our start of the cosine graph, because the cosine graph is going down. So this is the start of cosine. Again, you can make the argument that maybe the cosine graph started here because that's at a high point and going down, but that's sort of silly. You could also make an argument that it maybe started, you know, back here somewhere, but that's off the graph, and that's giving us a negative value for C, and no one's really into that one. So what we'd say is that the sine graph obviously starts at 0, comma, negative 1, and then the cosine graph, it starts at, and it looks like it actually starts at pi over 4, comma, 0. So depending on your point of view, uh, we could say sine starts uh, at 0, negative 1, and, or cosine starts at pi over 4 and uh, 0. Okay, now D is pretty easy. Remember, D is max plus minimum over 2. And everyone who's looking at this graph can tell that D is, of course, located you know, right here. So we, we can see that D is equal to negative 1. You can see the central line there. That's the easiest one to get usually just by looking at the graph. But well, let's just see how our formula works. Remember, our maximum value is 0, and our minimum value is negative 2, and then we divide the whole thing by 2. Of course, negative 2 over 2 is equal to negative 1. Ta-da! Okay, so how do we put this all together? Therefore, we can say that for uh, sine, we can say y is equal to um, a is 1, so we don't need to write that. So we say y, y is equal to sine in brackets, 2. Uh, we don't need to say anything fancy. You know, maybe I'll just, I'll show everything here. Of course, this is sort of ridiculous, so we're going to simplify this to just sine of 2x minus 1. Okay, so that is how we could write the equation in sine form, uh, or we could write it as 1 cosine 2 but now here, cosine would be phase shifted pi over 4 to the right, which of course simplifies to y is equal to cosine. And we can just keep this all here. Okay, so those are my two 
uh, equations. And if I went to graph these on something like Desmos, uh, you would wind up seeing that both of these equations would produce the exact same graph. I'll leave that as something you can do just to save a little bit of time here. Okay, so here's another one. Uh, if you haven't been doing anything, maybe pause the video and give this one a try. Okay, so for this one here, we have to do a little bit of thinking. Um, we can see we've got a maximum here. So we've got a max at y is equal to three, and we've got a minimum at y is equal to negative one. So we can go ahead and we can say a is equal to absolute value, max minus min over two. And uh, you can probably do this in your head, uh, but just in case, let's uh, work this all out. And this would be like this uh, absolute value four over two, which is two. So it shouldn't be too hard to see from the graph that the amplitude is two. And we can actually see the central line just cutting through here and it looks like it's gonna be at one. We can see that this distance here is two. So that's the amplitude. Okay, and you might even get D uh, as well while you're at it, um, but I'll save that for later, I guess. I'll just go in alphabetical order. So let's get B. So B equals, remember it's two pi over period. So we can see that the period here goes from uh, this point all the way to this point. Okay, that is one period. Now, we don't have information about the coordinates of this point, but what we can do is we can say that instead of going from a uh, peak to peak, we could actually say that going from here to here, so winding that up there, this is half of a period. We can see that half of a period is five pi over three, See, 5 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3. So that's 3 pi over 3 or just pi. So half of the period is pi. So we could say one period would be a full 2 pi. So what that's going to do for us is we are going to then go 2 pi over the period, which is 2 pi, and we get b is equal to 1. So this looks like there actually wasn't any horizontal compression for this graph. Now c. For, let's see. Aha, let's see again. Okay, so for c, uh, we can have two options. So for sine or for cosine depending on the point of view here. So for sine, we can see that our graph, now we have, we've actually got to think about this one a little bit. So I'm gonna circle right here. There's the central line. That is where sine starts. Looks like my writing's starting to melt. I think my pen is a little screwed up again today. Okay, so sine starts there, but the question is, what is the, coordinate for x. Uh, and that's not necessarily super obvious, so we're actually going to have to think about that one a little bit. Cosine starts right here because this is the high point. So that one's nice. So cosine starts here. Okay, so for cosine, it's actually really easy. We can see where it starts. It starts at the high point, uh, and we can see that cosine starts at the point 2 pi over 3 comma 3. Now sine, okay, so this is where we're going to have to think about this a little bit. And this is actually not a super obvious thing. Here's a fact that you may or may not have realized about sine and cosine. The difference in distance here horizontally from the center line point to the maximum, what fraction of the period is that equal to? So when you have a graph, this is actually one quarter of the full period. So I'm going to write a little note on the side. The horizontal distance between center and a peak or a trough equals one quarter of a period. Okay, so that's a general thing, not just for this question, that's a general thing for all questions here. So 
Knowing that, we can then subtract 1 quarter of the period away from 2 pi over 3. So we're going to go 2 pi over 3 minus a quarter of the period. And since we know the period is 2 pi, so a quarter of 2 pi, that's 2 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 4. Uh, okay, so now we have to do fractions. Um, so this is going to be 8 pi over 12 minus uh, 6 pi over 12. So that's 2 pi over 12 or pi over 6. Okay, so what we can see here is this point right there, it's going to be pi over 6 comma 1. And you have to do some work to get that worked out there. In fact, I've been doing things as an ordered pair, so let me just go ahead and write pi over 6 comma 1. Okay, so that one we have to do a little bit of work. And you can see in a problem like this, we would generally not try and write this in terms of sine. We would write this in terms of cosine to make our life easier. Okay, so then D, uh, D here, and this is max plus min over 2, and again, it's pretty easy. Um, we can see that the maximum is going to be uh, 3, the minimum is negative 1, and then we have 2. Uh, let's not get too messy here. And we wind up having uh, 2 over 2, which is equal to 1, which should not surprise us because we could see that D was equal to 1 just by looking at the graph. Okay, so finally putting this all together. So therefore, we've got y equals um, 2 sine b is equal to 1. So I don't need to worry about that. So I put a 1 there. Um, x, so minus pi over 6. That's my value for c here. And then I would add 1 to the end because that's my d. And I could say that y is equal to 2 cosine. Uh, again, there's the 1. This would be x minus 2 pi over 3. And uh, we would go plus 1. Uh, we've been doing a fair bit of this stuff here. So let me just... Uh, just a confirmation that we did the right thing. So 2 sine. 2 sine. And then we go x minus... Find pi here, so let's go find pi. There we go, there's pi over 6. We'll close that up, and then we go plus 1. And uh, of course, whenever you're doing anything with Desmos, you do have to make sure that you are in the correct mode. So are we in radian mode? Uh, Braille mode, okay, that's not... <laughs> yes, we're in radian mode. All right, so when we look at this, do we have the high point at... 2 pi over 3 and a low point at 5 pi over 3 and negative 1. Yes, we do. And similarly, we can go to cos and x minus, uh, this was 2 pi over 3. And then, of course, we would go plus 1. And you can see that they both overlap each other. So they're both identical graphs, which is exactly what we wanted to have. All right, so that's the end of that one there. Um, we'll leave that, and uh, there I am. Woo! Okay, goodbye, everyone.